where I'm going with this is guns. <laughs> because uh, out here in the middle of nowhere. Did you shoot the bear? Is this no, how this no, ends? no, 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 okay. no, 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 but that's where I'm going. The point I'm making is to, to wrap up, the, the, you know, the other, we're, we're talking about music and freedom. My attitude is I will not go to these venues in, in New York. Uh, Jack Murphy, a good friend of uh, a good friend of ours and he, uh, end of the show, he's been doing these events. And he said, we're going to do ours on the other side of the river because they've got vaccine mandates in New York and we can do it at a venue with that one. I, I, I believe right. maybe you can't play a stadium because they're all mandating it, but stand up for something. Right. So for us, we have this space and we can do almost anything. So we'll have a shooting range and we're going to be putting on concerts and we're going to be hosting events That's great. where we can just say, you know, screw it. There's also Pork Fest up in New Hampshire that has, you know, it's all about freedom and they've got the Free State Project. A bunch of Bitcoin conferences. There's a bunch of free festivals. There's a bunch of people coming together. There is a mass awakening totally. with protests happening all over the mm -hmm. world in huge record numbers that are absolutely incredible to see filling the streets for blocks on down. And I just had this idea randomly, Tim. I think we should do a parody of the Blair Witch Project. We go to the <laughs> woods that they filmed it in, oh, but man. we have firearms. So if someone messes with us, we just shoot them. <laughs> oh, and then no. the, that's the end of the movie. <laughs> it's like okay, that's that's what happens when you're armed. You're able to defend yourself, movie, yeah. and no it's one's like, able to hit, the, you know hurt you or kill you. Right? We wouldn't yeah. have had a two-hour terrifying yeah. movie. It'll be like two minutes long. They're like, Luke's, oh, we're walking in the woods. Oh, there's someone trying to hurt us. Oh. Trying to kill him. Oh, it'll be like that famous scene from the movie where Luke's got the camera pointed up his nose, and he's like looking around. And he goes, "I think I you need a nose. wide cam for that one." He got, he's got a wide cam, <laughs> and then he's like, "I hear something, Tim. Do you hear that? What's who is there?" And then Luke goes, "Hold on." And then he just unholsters his sidearm, and he's like, "Don't move. Uh, he's armed." Don't move. Don't make me. Put it down. Put it down. He's running away. All right. Anyway, what, what were we talking about, Tim? You were telling me a joke. Uh, no, but no, m moving on from that, I'm curious about uh, – uh, I'm, 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 you, you're probably pro 2A across the board. Absolutely. Yeah, I let's mean, talk about guns. It, the thing is I, I know people who never even owned a gun who are now – they have guns. They've got ammo. They're stocking up. I mean, what's happened the last couple of years has woken up a lot of people. And uh, I'm not only – my whole family knows how to – you know, shoot and all of that. We do, you know, target practice outside and at our gun club. But I think it's imperative to have the Second Amendment. The only thing keeping us America and free right now is our Second Amendment. I was, I was going to ask most you, important. where on the Republican political <laughs> spectrum are you? Are you in the Mitt Romney authoritarian status <laughs> sector? Or are you in the Ron Paul, I believe, in freedom sector? Can you where that you? sword over there, somebody? <laughs> where, where, on what level are you? Uh, let me just put it this way. Um, I'm endorsed by let, America let's, First. Let's say Ron Paul is 100, Mitt Romney is a zero on the freedom <laughs> scale. What's your number? I'm 100. Okay. I'm 100. I am a, I'm a Trump Republican, as I like to say. Um, I'm endorsed by President Trump, proud of that, by Congressman Gosar, by Rick Grinnell, Michael Flynn, Mike Lindell, one oh, of my wow. favorite patriots. So I have. Guy. I have the uh, the America First movement. Well, well behind Trump, me. I would I would say was like a, to my my opinion, my perspective, like a forty five, thirty five. I mean, he did he did the bump stock ban. He made a lot of incredulous moves against the Second mm -hmm. Amendment personally. Oh, uh, you were talking only on the Second Amendment. No, no, Amendment. no, in freedom, okay. all just freedom in general. I am a hundred percent pro two A, and and as I say, my my stance on it is shall not be infringed. I will never sign any legislation that would infringe whatsoever. Now on. Will you amendment. work towards repealing unconstitutional gun laws? Absolutely. That's, that's you know, but I think people think they go, oh, the governor has all the governor has all the power to do everything. You have to have legislators working with you. You know, this is how the system works. So we'd have to. And, and Arizona is a very free uh, state when it comes to Second Amendment. I think is probably the most free. You know, we've had open carry. Texas didn't even have open carry until last year. Right, yeah. well, yep. you're right, right. Yep. Uh, Lauren Boebert's Arizona, isn't she? No, or no. Uh, She's Colorado. Is she Colorado? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was, um, yeah. What about heavy weapons? I, how big? How do you feel? Like how how powerful a weapon do you think it should be legal for someone to carry? Are you asking asking like Joe Biden saying you need to have uh, fighter jets if you're really going to take on the? Yeah, like because people used to be losing to the Taliban. Be able to own, <laughs> the next week, they, they could own warships. This is something Tim quotes from time to time. Nuclear... People could own warships under the Second Amendment, like privateers, I mean, and then the government would conscript them to go fight for them. But like private citizens could own warships. So should a private citizen be able to own a small nuclear device, nuclear bomb, uh, I'm rocket launchers? I'm not for nuclear weapons. <laughs> I'm not for private citizens. What about citizens? rocket launchers? Um, the tough questions. Uh, huh? These are tough questions. <laughs> I don't think. I, 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 am, I am for, you know, there's probably any weapon that, any, any gun. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pro 2A, so. I, I, I don't know. Ro rocket launcher. It's a, I, it's I, weapons I, keep getting no, no, more on, powerful, so it's important to debate. Is, is a rocket launcher a firearm? 
Definitely. It's a ballistic. Right to bear arms. But air, it, it is arms. And so this is an issue. Uh, yeah. my, my attitude is private citizens should be allowed to own rocket launchers. Private citizens should be able to uh, be allowed to own bazookas. Well, if you RPGs. read the Second Amendment, it talks about, you know, it's not about hunting and it's not about target shooting. Right. It's about protecting against tyranny. Which, well, uh, it's, it's, it's about protecting everything. Mm -hmm. uh, a free state, it, you know, uh, uh, it requires the, the people to, I'm not quoting the Second Amendment, but I'm saying it, it says, you know, uh, who, can you, who, who can verbatim? Well, it's a well-armed militia and... and I want to. I just want to. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, we're all. I want to read it specifically. You guys go. Okay, I'll read it to you if you need it. Right here. A well-regulated militia, Thank you. being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The reason I want to get it verbatim is that uh, securing a free state. What does that mean? Well, can you have a free state if a bunch of bears attack your city? No, well, no, not of course if it's not. A lot of them. So it's not about one thing. It's about everything. And so there's been a lot of people who have said it's specifically about when your governor government becomes tyrannical. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. It's not specifically about that. It does include that. It's also about if a foreign adversary seeks to invade your country and everyone's armed mm. to the teeth and they're like, there's a gun behind or every if blade it, of grass. Or if a foreign corporation hijacks your monetary supply and prints your ec economy into oblivion, you're, that's mm -hmm. threatening the security of your free state right there. What happens if someone comes to your door and tries to pull your family out and put you in uh, a quarantine camp? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's when things go, go real dark and this real is, quick. Well, and I think this is why the difference between Australia, there's a million differences, and America. And I think this is why we haven't had more strong uh, restrictions placed against us. Because right. especially in a state like Arizona, you know, behind any door, someone might have a gun. Probably does. You can see it but, in the way the Australian cops move, too. They, they have no fear. No fear. Yeah. It's and, it's, and what people need to understand, it's not an issue of assuming that Australians would be running out the door and just firing wildly. It's like Ian mentioned, it's the fear. When the police broke down the door of Brianna Taylor's house, you know the story about Brianna Taylor? Mm -hmm. Her boyfriend fired around in the direction of the door, striking a police officer in the leg. That was ruled justified, and the charges were dropped mm -hmm. because if you break in someone's door, they could be armed. Police in America know this. And that means regardless of what the law is, they have to contend with the fact there's an armed population. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's going to be a bunch of right-wing nut jobs taking over with guns everywhere and screaming. And, you know, when, when the government does something wrong, it means the government is scared to make certain moves right. because it's not about whether or not there's an armed militia showing up at your door and saying, we hereby, de you know, declare. It's about the fact that you tried to enforce a red flag law. This happened, I think it was in Maryland. And the guy showed up with a gun, fought the cops, and the cops had to shoot and kill him. The police understand that when you go to a door, you're not going to get someone saying, okay, you might get a crazy person or not even a crazy person, a scared person. Yes. Rana right. Taylor's boyfriend who just said, someone's breaking into my home, fired, hit the cop in the leg. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's America, baby. In Australia, again, like Ian said, the cops are fearless. They know they have nothing mm -hmm. to worry that's about. True. There's a video uh, out of Australia where they kick the door and they walk in, start grabbing people, throwing them around. I'm like, that can't happen here in America to the same degree. Certainly there are no knock warrants. It, it will never happen. And there's there are cops mm. breaking into people's Maybe houses. Maybe in certain states. They were breaking where... into businesses a few months ago and shutting yeah. them down. But not like that and not Yeah, like that. Arm. Yeah, like that. No. There was video what footage. State? Where was there's that? Video, there was, I remember, remember seeing video footage in New Jersey. There was a lady uh, who was in her own private shop doing her own thing. Um, and, and she was uh, making baskets, I believe, uh, if I believe the story was, was correctly coming off fresh of my mind. Police officers literally broke down her door because she was open at her place of business by herself and told her to shut down immediately. In New well, Jersey. Yeah. In, in North Jersey, a woman uh, they, they, they closed everyone's businesses and said well, you're shut down end of story so she started live streaming on Facebook if you want to buy any of my products here's what I have the police showed up and they said ma'am you need to shut your store down and she said what are you talking about it is shut down I'm closed and they go no you're posting things online Mm. Yep. So these things do happen yeah, well, I said and, and not well, like that I mean but, not to the scale yeah. that it's no, 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 no. Ian you're still right New Jersey has possibly the strictest gun laws in the country. You can barely even get a gun in New Jersey. And if you can, there's crazy rules. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't have a weapon in your place of business. I could be wrong unless you are like a security guard and you've got mm -hmm. special certification. It is difficult and annoying. And so the police in New Jersey are substantially less worried about kicking this someone's door This is why it's in. so important to vote for the right people. Oh, yeah. This is this kind of stuff would not happen in Arizona, although our governor shut the state down twice. What, what was your take on 80 House Republicans yesterday voting for a national 
registry of of people who are vaccinated. Uh, one of those people was uh, what's that Republican's name with uh, uh, Den Crenshaw? Mm-hmm. Den oh, Crenshaw yeah. and, oh, and 80 man. House Republicans all voted for this. What? How would you vote on this particular issue no. when it comes to a federal registry of of people who are vaccinated? And what's your response to well, like, Den again, Crenshaw the, for voting for it? You know, uh, Dan Crenshaw used to be a really big hero, and, I, and in some ways I think he is a hero. I mean, he served our country valiantly, and, and I think he's a great guy. But some of the things he's done politically I, I find uh, alarming, that being one of them. That is a terrible idea. Now, I be, I'm running for governor, not, I'm ru- not running for Congress, and so this is something that would be handled at the federal level. Of course, yeah. Um, I but am governor's not for more, that. Governor's more important. I'm not for that. Because as a governor, you have the authority to say, we're not going to give you the database. We're not going to give you the information or the data. Would you comply as a governor if there was a federal vaccine? I believe our governor did uh, comply with that. In order to get the federal money, you had to agree to a bunch of stuff. New Hampshire was one of the states that actually declined uh, the money as a state. Would, Would you be willing to do the same thing as governor? I would be. Okay. Well, if how if it means we're going to give out, well, here's the deal. We did get a lot of money for, and, and then they say it's for COVID relief. Yeah. But not if I'm going to have to give up my my citizens, our citizens, my fellow citizens information, private I'm, information. I'm impressed. I, I, w- I was expecting you to dance around that, that answer because that's a tough one, right? Well, I mean, look what we're, we're, where it's getting us. We keep yeah. complying with the federal government and all the things they want. And look where we are right now. We're no more closer to having our freedom back. And when do we stop and say enough is enough? We're not going to comply anymore. We're going to get off the federal teat, take your money and shove it, or give us the money, but we're going to spend it the way we want to spend yeah, it. Yeah, We're not going to do this, that, and the other with your money. This, this is why I said governor is more important. A lot of people pointed out that if Ron DeSantis were to run in 2024, Florida would lose a very powerful voice who's doing the right thing mm-hmm. for the citizens. And so he's better working in Florida because he's created a, a, a safe haven, essentially, for people. They're flocking to Florida like crazy, buying up property like crazy. Why? Freedom. Yeah. A monoclonal antibodies for free for people who are sick. Lowest COVID cases. The economy reopened a, a while back. And Ron You go Sanders, there and you don't even realize there's any restrictions. There aren't any yep. restrictions. You're living free. And that's what Arizona is going to be. So I, I, I tell people, too, especially with the legislatures in the states, if you keep thinking the federal government is your path to fixing your problems, you are incorrect. Ron DeSantis has proven that. Abbott, to a certain degree, he's not perfect. We'll see if he's you know, coming around a little bit. Yeah, yeah maybe Alan West will win because he'll go. You know, he'll he'll go much much more like uh, Ron DeSantis. And then uh, when it comes to a, a potential convention of states, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, changes can be made if at the state level people vote for. And we mentioned this across the board. And also to this point, district attorneys very important, big issue. But I, I think and county attorneys and sheriffs. I mean, it's. We just have to be educated where we're going. We have to be educated. And I believe the America First movement. And we're going to look at who's funding these people. Who are their consultants? People are waking up to it. And you mentioned some people who are still asleep, like the person you talked about uh, earlier. A friend of mine. Yeah. We're not going to name names, but who's just completely unaware of anything. But I think a lot of people are waking up and who were never involved in politics. We're seeing them when we do events. We have a movement afoot in Arizona. We do events that... Thousands of people come out too. We do rallies and uh, you know all kinds of rallies, and people come up to me and say, "I am embarrassed to say this, but I've never voted before, and yeah. I'm whatever age, fifty something, and I'm, I'm voting. I'm so worried about where this country. I've never been polit- politically involved, but I know who's running, who their consultants are, what's behind them, what they believe in. So there's a lot of exciting things happen. I'm actually very hopeful for the future. I was at a Trump rally in Fort Lauderdale back in 2016, and Every single person that I, I talked to had said, like, I'm either independent or I've not voted before. And I was like, you're at a Republican rally. And they were like, Trump's different, man. It's, you know, a lot of these people felt like Mitt Romney. Like you saw the disdain that this Luke yeah. Rakowski has for the Mitt Romneys of this country. <laughs> and yet, but Trump supporters do, too. They despise I him. I do, too. I do, too. And, and Jeff Flake and, and John McCain. I mean, we saw a lot of that rhino. And we have that in Arizona. We have a deep, deep swamp in Arizona. And, you know, people go, don't say rhinos. Well, that's what they are. Actually, I disagree. Um, I think you're the rhino. You want to think I'm the rhino. You want to. But you know what? You know what I mean by that? Why? That the establishment, the Republican Party has always been this feckless, weak and, you know, in my opinion, well, well, ineffective. And what's happened now is a bunch of people like Trump, like DeSantis and like you have come in 
under the umbrella of Republican, representing something with principle. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, I think you don't want you, you, to, to well, I, you see I, what I'm I, saying? I'm the conservative running. I'm, re, I'm a conservative running as a Republican. Exactly. Because the Republican Party, I do believe, is the party of Trump. It's the Trump Republican Party. Now it and is. And that is America first. And, you know, I talk to people who are establishment, and I believe I can bring people together. I was a Republican looking from the outside in before I became a politician, thinking that the party, you know, we had the rhinos and all of that, but I, I thought the party was more congealed and together. Now that I'm running, I realize it's so fractured. And, and I believe we can bring this party together, but the establishment has to realize America First is here to stay. And they should love that. We've brought people off the sidelines, people who you mentioned at the Trump rally that I've seen at our rallies who've never voted before. But this we is, want this, them in. This, this is what I mean, basically. When I see a ton of people who are not Republicans, who are joining the Republicans, but not because of Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney is what, what I think of when I think of Republican. He repels people. From and, the party. And it, it is a an elitist, corporatist, anti-American. The Koch brothers were all about the open borders and, mm-hmm. you know, bringing in cheap labor to exploit. Even Bernie Sanders opposed it. Trump was not like the rest of them when he came in. So he was a Republican, but just in name, he repre- rep- represented something new. So to be fair, I would say now the party has become the party of Trump. Mm-hmm. And now that is what it means to be Repub- Republican. So now I would say I understand right. when when you refer to McCain and these individuals <laughs> as rhinos, it's because they're the people who don't actually represent the new the, the voter base, those who are joining the party and those who are stepping up. It's huge what's happening, though. I mean, it is so huge what's happening. It's very exciting. I go, we go to events and they say, oh, can you come speak at this Republican group or, or wherever we go? And they call us a couple weeks later and they say, we need to move the location. We, we usually get 30 people. We have 130. And this is what we're seeing everywhere we go. People are off the sidelines. They're very excited about our campaign. And we have a movement. We have more volunteers than any other campaign in the, in the country right now. It took us only three weeks to get our signatures to get on the ballot. It usually takes, to put that in perspective, and I'm, I'm new to politics, so I'm like, okay, three weeks. Why, why did it take us three weeks? And they say, Carrie, no, you don't understand. It normally takes candidates nine months to get them. Wow. And they have to pay for them. And sometimes they don't get them at all. You got your you got your signatures in three weeks. It's never been done in the history of Arizona. Well, I mean, is, is any people are excited. Uh, uh, when's the election for Arizona? August 2nd. That's the primary. So of, of, of next year. Yeah, you're getting a, you're getting a head start. huh? Mm-hmm. we're acting. We've been running since June 1st and we've been running like it was October of 22. My staff jokes. It's like we're running like it's the last month leading up to the uh, general election. Do you have a, a show? Sorry to interrupt, but do you like a talk show? You'd be great. No, hosting, I need one. <laughs> yeah, a weekly talk I, I show. I've been on TV daily. for three decades. I've thought Keep, about doing a podcast. So this is yourself. really interesting to watch, yeah. but I thought it was easier than this. I, I thought with just me and a camera and, and you would bring somebody else in, but this is a, quite an ordeal. Well, it's the best way to do it because it's not scripted. You you talk from your, your heart. You don't talk from talking <clears throat> points. There's nothing scripted here. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to watch live, you can check out this channel Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Now, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and if you want more unfiltered and uncensored content with all of these guests, go to TimCast.com and become a member. All of these guests you know and love in exclusive segments on our website where we are unrestricted in what we talk about, so you'll definitely not want to miss it. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.